Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adamo Baseball, where I'm your host, Adamo. And in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the St. Louis Cardinals. So, I am still picking them to win the NL Central. Not because I think that they should be a good team, but because I think that they are the best of the options. Um, look, Pittsburgh is probably the worst team in baseball right now, so you can't pick them. The Reds lost their best pitcher to free agency. The Cubs are reeling due to having some serious financial issues thanks to the ye old virus. And the Brewers really aren't that great right now. They're a shadow of what they were you know, three years ago. So I kind of have to go with St. Louis, more or less by default. And frankly, if they don't want it, I wouldn't be surprised. The talent that they have is really talented, like superstar level talent. The rest of the team, however, is not good. Honestly, I don't see this team doing very well, and thanks to this, um, St. Louis will probably be a three seed in the playoffs if they win the division. I'm making that a big if. I think that they'll win the division, though don't be surprised if they don't. The NL Central is wide open this year. Um, yeah, they're going to go down in the first round of the playoffs if they do make it there. They could actually be the weakest division winner this season. I know I'm picking the Angels to win the AL West. Don't be surprised if they do. But I think the Angels are better than the Cards. Like, across the board, I, I don't think St. Louis is going to be a good team this year. I just think that they're going to be the best of the options. And this is a division where an 85-win team can win the division. In fact, it may look like they're crumbling in September. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Leading off the top of the lineup, Tommy Edmond, second base. He's relatively new to the league. Rookie year is 2019. He played 99 games that year. He didn't play particularly bad. He just didn't play particularly great. Good enough to maintain his position at second base. Um, I think he's a decent fielder. As a hitter, for a second baseman, yes. He's a good second baseman hitter but he's not a great hitter. He needs to get his walk total way up. Um, I don't know. He's not bad, per se. He's just not necessarily great. Batting second, shortstop, Paul DeJong. He, he's a good shortstop, but he's not a particularly great hitter. Personally, he's the kind of guy I'd put sixth in the lineup not second. Okay, three and four. These guys, you'll probably see them being flipped back and forth between the three hole and clean up all the time because it makes no sense to just leave them where they are. You can put either one in either spot. Paul Goldschmidt, first base. Nolan Arandano, third base. Considering St. Louis is willing to pick up the contract that Arandano is given from the Rockies, it means that they fully expect him to be the player that he has been in years past, and there's no reason to believe that he shouldn't. As it stands right now, he's slotted for the cleanup spot. There's, He's one of the few third basemen where I would say, yes, leave him there. In fact, he's probably the best third baseman in baseball. Right now, he probably is. I can't think of anyone else. And Paul Goldschmidt, look, they picked up his contract from Arizona, 
and he has been paying off for St. Louis, so it makes sense that they got him right where they got him. I think this would be the right spot to say um, Matt Carpenter is still on the St. Louis Cardinals roster. However, he is not listed in St. Louis's lineup because it turns out that he is a much, much, much better uh, designated hitter than he is fielder than he has been in years past. Uh, like, he actually beat out David Freeze for third baseman the year after David Freeze won World Series MVP. And, you know, everyone was talking about, you know, salsa with Matt Carpenter, and he's, he's a really good hitter. Problem for him is that both infield holes where he usually is plugged in, they're taken. So apparently they're trying to work him into second base, but they don't know how good of a second baseman he is. And they don't know, or I don't know, they may try and fit him in at short at some point. Their issue is going to be getting his bat in the lineup. And with the National League turning down the DH for 2021, that's because the donors wanted to use that as their leverage for the expanded playoffs. So that didn't work out. So... As of right now, Matt Carpenter is not in the lineup. But I'd be shocked if he's not a regular in the lineup. I just want to get that out there now. Batting fifth, Dylan Carlson, right field. Well, I, uh, I think last year was his rookie year. So there's really not a lot to go off of because 2020 was 2020 is 2020. So really, you can't base it on anything you don't know what you're looking at I don't other people might batting 6th Yadier Molina, catcher I've been on the Yadi train for a long time, I'm not a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan, it's been a long time since I have been but I've always been a fan of Yadier Molina he is one of, if not the best catcher in baseball not necessarily right now but throughout the vast majority of his career, he has been the best catcher in baseball. Yes, I include Buster Posey as, at his prime. Yachty knows how to handle a pitching staff. He knows how to read a pitcher, so he knows when he can steal base. His issue is that he's slow. But he also knows how to hit, which most catchers, you don't, or you hope that they hit 250 at best. Yadier Molina hits over 300 a lot of years. So, yeah, he's he's one of the few players in baseball today that you say he's going in the Hall of Fame. He is. Batting seventh, Tyler O'Neill, left field, raw, and... There's really not a lot to go on. I think he's been playing for two years. Batting eighth, Harrison Bader, or Bader, center field. Last year is his rookie year. Well, rookie year. And I really couldn't tell you anything about either of those guys because there's not a lot to go on. So, really, you got... You got amongst the best 3-4 slot in a lineup in baseball. You got one of, if not the best catcher in baseball. And the rest of the lineup really isn't that strong. Something that St. Louis has had a lot of issues with in years past has been offense. I mean, that's why they went after Arandano. That's why they went after Goldie. They need offense. And Matt Carpenter was trying to carry that offense by himself for quite a while, so they're going to need it. Their rotation. So they're hoping that Jack Flaherty comes back and plays as well as he did in 2019 because 2020 was a fluke. They're hoping that he can pitch back to that level because he is the ace in that rotation as it stands right now. 
He's young. He's talented. Can he get back to that form? Pitching second on a one-year contract. Honestly, I think this is probably going to be his last go-around. Adam Wainwright. Several years past, he has been one of the best pitchers in baseball. When they won the World Series in 2006, um, he was the guy brought in to close out Game 7. Carlos Beltran had been burning St. Louis that whole National League Championship Series, and, and Adam Wainwright was the guy that was brought in to close it out, and he was a rookie that year. That was 16 years ago, or 16 seasons ago. This is his 16th season in the league. That was a long time ago. And for a lot of years, he was the best best pitcher in their rotation and one of the best in baseball. Right now, he's got to be so methodical because... They're signing him to a one-year deal. That's basically saying, all right, this is your last go. After this, we're probably not holding on to you. Pitching third, Quang Hyung Kim. If I pronounce his name wrong, I'm sorry. He's a Korean pitcher. He pitched a little bit in 2020. Of what he did do, he looked good. However... He doesn't have a lot, so there's not really a lot to base it on. So I can't tell if he's in the right spot in the rotation or not. He could be a superstar. He could be a bust. I don't know. Uh, Miles Mikolas, he's probably one of the most inconsistent pitchers in baseball. He is, and he actually is in the right spot in the rotation because... You don't know what you're going to get this year. Pitching fifth, Alex Reyes. He's spent most of his short career in the bullpen. So you don't really know what you're going to get from him either. Honestly, there's a lot of question marks in this rotation. There's certainly talent there. Don't get me wrong. There is definitely talent there. But we have no idea what this rotation is going to do. We could have five superstars. We could have five busts this season. I could not tell you. Their bullpen, this really is their strength. Jordan Hicks, Giovanni Gallegos, and Andrew Miller. Yes, Andrew Miller is still in St. Louis. Andrew Miller for a lot of years, was the best reliever in baseball. And honestly, there's no reason to say that he's bad by any stretch. He's still really good. I don't know if he's going to go to the Hall of Fame or not, but he's certainly still amongst the best right now. Uh, Giovanni Gallegos, what I saw, he's actually pretty good. He may end up being the closer. Per MLB.com, Jordan Hicks is going to be the closer. And I read a couple of headlines basically saying that he started really well in his first spring training outing. So he may be able to hold on to that, to that role as a closer. And if he does, then they've got a one, two, three punch for the bullpen. So if they have issues with their rotation, they've got a bullpen they can lean on. You can't do that 162 games of the year. But you can certainly do it. 70 plus. So, yeah, you've got you've got a very strong bullpen. You've got a bull or you got a rotation that may or may not be good. Maybe great, maybe terrible. We don't know. And then we got a lineup that outside of their two superstars may not produce a lot of runs. Though they do have good defense. That is true. A lot of teams don't really think about that, and I really don't cover that very much on my podcast, but they do have a good defense. 
those are my thoughts on the St. Louis Cardinals. If you'd like to let me know your thoughts, you can do so down in the comments below. Or if you're listening to my show, if if the platform that you're listening to will let you send me a message, please do so. I probably won't be able to respond, but I do appreciate all the comments. And if not, let me know on my Instagram, Adamo underscore baseball. With that being said, thank you for listening. Cheers until next time.